Today we talked about the derivatives of trigonometric functions. If you know the derivative of sine and cosine, then you can pretty easily figure out the derivative of the other trigonometric functions, like tangent and secant. Let's talk about how we found the derivative of sine. First, let's plug sine into the definition of a derivative. Remember, that's the limit as h goes to 0 of sine of x plus h minus sine of x over h. Remember what we're doing is we're taking an average rate of change and imagining the interval that averages over shrinking down to 0. So we have sine of x plus h minus sine of x. That's our change in y, and then our change in x is h. Well, what we saw is that you can use trig rules to simplify this until it looks like the following. What we have here is sine x times the derivative of cosine of x at x equals 0. And notice cosine of x at x equals 0 has a horizontal tangent line. Cosine of x is increasing before we get to 0, and it's decreasing after we get to 0. But right at 0, that's when it reaches 1, its highest value, and it's neither increasing nor decreasing. So this derivative is 0. The limit as h goes to 0 of sine h over h. This takes a little bit more geometric intuition, but this limit we showed is equal to 1. So this derivative is sine of 0 times 0, which is 0, plus cosine of x times 1, which is cosine of x. So the derivative of sine is cosine. If you were so inclined, you could do a very similar calculation that would show the derivative of cosine x is minus sine x. Once you have the derivative of sine and the derivative of cosine, you can find the derivative of all six of the sort of fundamental trigonometric equations by using the quotient rule. Now you will have to memorize these. You'll have to be able to recall them very quickly, but there are some chips and tricks. In a bit, I'll show you how to differentiate cosecant of x as an example, but all of these tangent, secant, cosecant, and cotangent, you can figure out just by using sine, cosine, and the quotient rule. However, that often takes a long time, and it's easy to make a mistake. So you really ought to try and memorize these, but there are some tips to help you. For instance, the ones that start with co, I've written these in green, cosecant, cosine, and cotangent. These are all negatives. Also, the names suggest a certain kind of grouping. Sine and cosine, well, their derivatives are flipped and negative. Secant and cosecant, again, the cos are negative. Secant and cosecant show up like this, and tangent and cotangent show up like this. So if you remember that the derivative of secant is secant tangent, for cosecant, you put a negative sign, secant becomes cosecant, and tangent becomes cotangent. Likewise, for tangent and cotangent, the derivative of tangent is secant squared, the derivative of cotangent is cosecant squared, and we get a negative. Remember, once we know the derivatives of sine and cosine, we can find out the derivatives of tangent, secant, cosecant, and cotangent. I'm going to show you as an example how to find the derivative of secant of x. Remember that secant is the same as 1 over cosine. Now looking at this, I see that I can just use the quotient rule. If you are familiar with the chain rule, you can also write this in a slightly different way and use the chain rule. But since we haven't learned it yet, let's use the quotient rule. We're going to need to know the derivative of this top function and the derivative of this bottom function. Now this top function is a constant function, it's just 1. It never changes, so its rate of change is 0. This bottom function, cosine x, well, we memorized that this is equal to minus sine x. So now I'm ready to use my quotient rule. It's the bottom function times the derivative of the top function 
minus the top function times the derivative of the bottom function, all over the bottom function squared. Now I can simplify this a bit. Cosine of x times 0 is just 0. Minus a minus is a positive. So my top looks like, I'm just going to write this as 1 times sine x divided by cosine x times cosine x. And I've been writing it this way because I know I'm going to split it up. This is going to be 1 over cosine x times sine x over cosine x. 1 over cosine x, well that's just our secant x, come back again. And sine x over cosine x, that's tangent of x. So this is how we show that the derivative of secant of x is tangent of x.